For both of us. For her and for me. 2646. Who is Hannah Myerson? The psychic, Joan. She says she can channel it. Yes, Dorothy, I am that desperate. Hey, did he say to review Herodotus or Hippolytus? I'm totally confused. He wants a four-page essay on Heraclitus. Defend the statement, one cannot step into the same river twice. That's easy. But can two people step into the same river once? Um, I'm Porter Cameron. You must be Melissa, right? Right. Listen, this is going to sound a little awkward, but my dad was a suicide, too, three years ago. So I know how you feel. I know what you're going through because I've been through it all myself. So if you ever want to talk about it, <laughs> I couldn't get out of bed for six months, OK? I could not concentrate. I could not read. I mean, can you study? It's hard, but um, I'm doing OK in my classes so far. I really admire that. I had to drop out for a year. <laughs> Well, maybe it's easier for me being away from home. There's not as many memories. I know. Sometimes you actually forget about it for a while. And then you feel incredibly guilty. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't talk to people for the longest time. I completely dropped out from the human race. I know. I don't even want to be with my friends. I feel so frozen, like I can't communicate. Not even with my mother. Which is probably just as well, because she's never home to talk to anyway. I think she's worried about me, though. I mean, she wants me to see this shrink. But I don't really want to talk to him, either. Oh, shrinks. Tell me about it. I mean, no matter what you do, until enough time passes, you just can't help feeling bad. I used to cry all the time. Really? Yeah. You can do that with me if you want. And if you feel like crying, cry. So, is there anything you want to talk about? I hate economics. I don't hate it. I just hate my professor. He makes it so dull and, and formulaic. I don't really hate him. I just think I resent his approach to teaching. Well, th that's why you're here, to discuss your professor's teaching style? Who are you here for? For yourself or for your mother? It wasn't my idea. Look, I know this is a terribly difficult time for it's you. It's fine. Melissa. Really, everything's fine. That was my wife. <laughs> I've got carpal tunnel, so tennis is out. But we're planning a vacation to St. Bart's. As soon as we finish remodeling the house. Well, Max and I have reached the point that we are sick and tired of going out for the sake of going out. We've had it up to here with Bridge. So we have a new rule. Every Sunday we spend together alone. That's what Sundays are all about, staying home together. Right, Joan? You got it. <laughs> you know, there are yuppies, young urban professionals. There are dinks, double income, no children. I was an oink. One income, no choice. I was single again. Single. I was dateable. Ugh. I suddenly realized I was going to need a whole new set of old friends. And I didn't want to date at my age. I mean, even when I was young, I was never sexy. I'd always thought that one day I'd grow up and be one of those women that was like a, a devil bride. You know what I mean? So hot, you would walk through the supermarket, touch the frozen foods, and they go, Pff. Never happened with me. But I had to go out. I wasn't going out to meet men. I just, I just wanted company. I didn't care if they were gay, if they were straight. I didn't care if there were two in the crowd or 12. I just wanted out. And I would run and run and run and run and run and run and run. I wouldn't come home until I was absolutely exhausted. 
Because then the real pain would start. I saw Edgar everywhere, the past, the memories. It was all so close. Couldn't think. Couldn't rest. Sometimes I... I couldn't breathe. I've got to get out of this house. Melissa! Tommy. Congratulations. Why? This is the first time you didn't give your mother a hard time about going to temple. Well, I'm not religious, but uh, it is the holiest day of the year. The day we pray for the dead. I'm going to go and pray for my father's soul, if there's a God. Well, then, this is not the time to hedge your bets. No. Where's Mom? She's on the phone. That's how it else is new. You want anything to eat? Drink? Mom, it's Yom Kippur. We're fasting. So, how do you like the East Coast headquarters? It's nice for a hotel, but not as nice as our house in L.A. Well, what do you think? Well, I think it's hard for your mother to live there alone right now. Yeah, and it's such a big house, and she's such a tiny person. But this move to New York, I mean, it's just a temporary thing, isn't it? Well, I think she likes it here. But she hasn't actually mentioned anything to you about selling the house, has she? You miss the old homestead, eh? Yeah. I felt safe there. I have no roots. The house is all I have left. I miss Daddy. So do I. I want to have one of those experiences that people talk about where they can feel the presence of the person that died, like right there in the room with them, or if they're driving in the back seat of the car. Anywhere, really. You never know. That could still happen. Well, if it does, I hope it happens during an exam. It'll be like, hey, Dad, question seven, true or false? Why? <laughs> How are things for you? Sad. I know. You were daddy's best friend. You can't imagine how much I miss him. Missy, you're late. I've already lit daddy's memorial candle. Well, he could have waited for me. Honey, we have to hurry. Service is starting in 15 minutes, and you know how they are in Yonkip. It's easier to get seats for the World Series. Tommy, this is the Jewish World Series. Oh, you look so pale. Are you all right? I'm just afraid I'm going to lose it when they mention daddy's name. Me too, honey. Me too. Let's go. Thank you so much. We'll see you in two hours. Taxi! We're never gonna make it on time. We can't wait for a cab, Missy. Taxi! Let's just make a run for it. We're late. I know. The traffic is horrific. Every seat is taken. No, no, no. We're, we're in the reserve section, B-34 and 35. You're too late. I'm giving your seats Mother, away. Don't shush me, Mother. You Mother, can't please. Give it away. Listen, please. You can't give it away. I pay for the You're money. late. There's yeah. nothing I can do. No, no, Mother, please, please don't make it. Nobody can be in these seats, Melissa. No, please Mother, don't shush. Please, shush. Mommy, it's memorial service. Let us stand in the back. Yeah. car pulls up beside me at the red light and they start staring at me like I'm wanted for murder. I hate that feeling. It's so unnerving. If I have a system that scares them right off, just look back and pick your nose. <laughs> hey, you can drive through the red light if you want to. Believe Didn't me, you play not this room 20 years ago? I fingers. played a hundred rooms like this 20 years ago. Never thought I'd be back. 
troops are road tested. What if Marty's right? What if they won't accept me as a widow? They will. You'll do fine. You've got to. What if, what if I don't think I'm funny anymore? Well, I guess then you're going to have to get a job as a manicurist. You are such a comfort to me in my old age, Dorothy. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Cleveland's Comedy Spot is proud to present America's Funniest Woman. Right. Please welcome Miss Joe. What if I break down? What if I start to cry on you stage? Won't. You're a trooper. You're a pro. Now get on out there and... Say it. Come on, say it. Just say it. Get on out there and... Knock on the <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Hello, and uh, it's great to be here. Um, as you know, this has not been the best year in the world for me. Uh, I was fired from Fox. No, 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 it's okay. I'm, I'm not allowed legally to talk about it, according to my lawyer, for another eight months, 14 days, uh, three hours, <laughs> four minutes, and uh, seven seconds. Uh, but as soon as that's up, Give me a call. Right. Doesn't you have to be collect? I'll talk to you and tell you the whole. Thing. Trust me. Um, anyhow, that. But it, it, it was it was a lousy year in general. Uh, my husband, as some of you may or may not have uh, read, he uh, he had a triple bypass and then he had a nervous breakdown and uh, then he, uh, he he committed suicide and uh, he left in his will that he should be cremated and his ashes scattered all over Neiman Marcus because at least he knew that way I would visit him every day. <laughs> Your touch. Oh, they were very kind. No, you were very, very good. Who are you calling, Melissa? Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, uh, could I just give Miss Rivers a moment? Honey? Oh, sure. It's me. Listen, I just got off stage. I mean, but literally just got off stage. Missy, I was so scared in the beginning. I thought I was going to faint, but it worked out just fine. Mom, I know you've got to work, but come on. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's only two months since Daddy died. How can you stand up there and tell jokes in front of people? Wait a second. I, I don't think of this as an affront to Daddy at all. See, what do you want me to do? Crawl into a ball and get under a blanket and hide somewhere? No, but you can respect his memory a little bit longer. How could you get out there and do stand-up routines? Melissa, will you just try to understand, please? Missy, we need the Whatever, money. Just do what you want. M Missy, we have bills to pay. Fine. Whatever. I have to Whatever. work, Melissa. Would you... Melissa? She hung up on me. It's so hard being the mother of a daughter in this day and age. I mean, you try to be their friend, and you also have to still be their mother. You've got to teach them morals and responsibilities and ethics and sex. You've got to talk to them about sex. And really, honestly, in my day, I think it was a lot better. My mother told me nothing, and I knew nothing. To me, going all the way was visiting my cousin Natalie in New Jersey. I mean, my mother just couldn't bring herself to tell me the facts of life. Once she spoke to me, she said, Joan, only have sex with someone you love very, very, very much, or your husband. That was Melissa, that was different. She came to me, I think she was seven, and she said, Mommy, tell me about sex. So I sat her down, I told her all about the birds and the bees and the birds and the bees and the birds and the bees. And after about an hour, she said, that was very, very interesting. Now, Mommy, tell me about sex. <sighs> and we talked. It was nice. When she was 11, she came to me again, I remember, and she said to me, Mommy, what was your first time like? I said, Darling, it was the most beautiful minute and a half I ever spent in the back seat of a car. Hey, sunshine. Don't make fun of me. I'm not in the mood. Whoa. Excuse me. I thought I was just saying hello. Look, I'm just having a really bad time right now. Tell me. I just want to sleep. I can't concentrate. I have no appetite. And when I don't feel like crying, I feel like screaming. And on top of all that, I keep trying to call my mother, and she's never there. Do you think she's OK? 
Oh, I'm sure she is. She's just not at home. She never is. Listen, maybe she has to go out. Every single night? My father's dead two months. Maybe getting out is her way of dealing with the pain. Maybe. But if it is, she sure knows how to enjoy her suffering. The only thing I enjoy these days is riding. I mean, I can just lose myself in it. Stop thinking entirely. Know what I mean? So, what about your father? I think we've been avoiding that subject. It's very difficult for me to talk about him. I know. But I think about him all the time. I never know what's going to trigger it. I'll hear a song he liked, or... Some days, it's just the quality of the light. Silly things. Like yesterday at lunch, someone orders an avocado salad, and I remember the time that I'm in kindergarten, and um, we grew avocado pits, you know, with the toothpicks in them. It was a class project. Well, mine took, and um, I brought it home, and Daddy planted it in a pot, and it occurred that, and so he took it and he planted it out back behind the house in the backyard. It grew into a tree. It's still there. Behind the house. I don't know what I would do without that house. It means everything to me. all I have left of my father. Hey. Hey, I am starving. Let's go get something to eat. I made dinner. So, where are your roommates? I don't have any. You're kidding. You mean you have this entire place to yourself? Yeah. My father left this to me. Must need a lot of space. That, and I make it a rule never to share a house with anyone I don't sleep with. <laughs> you must be starving. Dinner should be ready by now. Voila. <laughs> it's the first meal I have prepared completely by myself. Miss, would you care for the escargot, the caviar, the brie, or the scent? I think I'll be starting with the jelly sandwich. Oh, excellent choice. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the best meals I have ever had. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, maybe it was the company. <laughs> well. Well. Can I kiss you? No. <laughs> no, why no. not? Because I don't know your taste in music. Ah, oh, well, it's Big Band, Jimmy Dorsey. Now? Okay. <laughs> um, am I that bad a kiss? <laughs> no. no, no, no. You just make me feel all sorts of things that I'm not sure I can handle right now. Like what? Like I'm afraid I'm not going to feel anything or that I'll feel too much. You can let go, Melissa. I mean, don't hold on to your emotions. Don't bottle them up. I'm here for you. I trust you. I just don't know if I trust myself. Listen, you know, sooner or later, you are going to have to step back into life. Your dad would want you to do that. I know he would. So, listen to me. I'm here for you. See, when my dad committed suicide, well, I didn't ha have anyone to help me through it, so... I didn't know how to reach out. But I want you to. 
I want you to reach out to me. Okay. Listen, I don't want to pressure you in anything. If uh, you want me to go, I'll go. I'll, I'll understand. Stay. you're a survivor. Goodbye, and I love you, I love you, I love you. Did I scare you? Oh, yeah. I have a real phobia about Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Come to my party. It's the creepiest night of the year. You should be there. <laughs> I have a sore throat. Come on, it'll be fun. There's hot apple cider, loud music. I brought your costume and everything. <laughs> Please? Please? <laughs> I got a surprise. Trick or treat. Look, I don't care how much you drink. Just, just don't do drugs, OK? Come on. I don't like cocaine. It makes me feel out of control. You got to like coke. You're in L.A., babe. Will you promise me? No drugs. Deal. Buddy's on her. Wake him. Porter! Porter! Are you just gonna stand there and watch me? Could I? Porter! Tim! I'm Porter! Kidding, I'm kidding. <sighs> I don't think that's a milk mustache. He promised me, damn it. Ta da! <laughs> Porter was a bad boy. Yes, he was. What a tarry. Very, very tarry. Porter, you just can't do this. Okay. Now let's do some more blow. I don't believe you. Come here, you little wacky. Come no. here, you little wacky. Hey, 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 okay. hey, You're away. I can't believe I'm auditioning for Broadway. Hi. Play. They're ready for you now. Oh, thank you. All right, now. Just remember to breathe. Take it slow, just like we rehearsed it. Okay. I like the third girl. Manny Azenberg, Gene Sachs. Joan Rivers. Joan. Gene. Oh. Well. You must uh, really want this role. Oh, you have no idea. Thank you for letting me audition. This is not a stunt, Joan. We, we don't want a Las Vegas comic. I know, that's why I called and asked to read. All right. Yeah, I, I brought my own sweater. It'll just be a second.
My grandfather made this table with his own hands for my grandmother. Over 52 years she had this table. She's going to do a Neil Simon play on Broadway. She'd be glad. Well, I am glad, but it's not that simple. They start rehearsals right away. The play could run for months, maybe years. And you know what that means? Big bucks. No, it means she's really going to want to sell the house in L.A. now. I'm not going to let her do it. Wait a minute. Slow down. You don't know that for sure. She's in New York. She has a whole new life. That house is my life. My father left it to me. He wanted me to have it. It's everything that ever was, everything that'll never be again. And I'm not going to give that up. Has Porter called you? Yeah. But I don't want to talk to him. It's probably a wise policy. I miss him. I can't help it. And you're not going to see him, right? Right. So you hungry? You want to you get a pizza? You go to a movie or something? I don't know. Come on, you have to eat. These days I prefer to sleep. I just can't seem to get enough of it. That's a classic sign of depression. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Freud. Sorry, a little psych 101 is a dangerous thing. <laughs> it's OK. My shrink tells me the same thing, only he gets paid for it. Wow. It's the third time he's done this. <sighs> it's a romantic son of a gun, isn't he? Here. Have some. I wish I had someone to give them to. <laughs> Put them in your room. Real men take time to smell the flowers. <sighs> oh, my God. Should this pup grow up without a male role model? I love you, Porter. Jerry Warner, Parker Madison. Joan Rivers, if you could. <laughs> yes, indeed. I understand you and I are going apartment hunting together. Yeah, listen, can I be totally honest with you? Please. I, I don't want to waste your time. I mean, I, I'm looking for an apartment, thank you. But I'm not looking. I'm looking. And, and even if I find something, I may not want to take it because I don't know if I can sell my house in Los Angeles. Listen, 